Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to this week's episode of the Fan Levitard Show. I'm Ty, he's Nathan, and we are joined by a guest who has defied death, an accomplished base jump stunt man. He's thrown himself out of buildings, he's thrown himself out of planes, over 10,000 skydives, over 6,000 base jumps. He has a paramotor, which I just learned, which is awesome, and he helped our friends, our good friends, Tony and Witty, hurl themselves out of airplanes with Team Red Bull, Miles Dasher joining us here on the Fan Levitard Show. Miles, how you doing, man? Woo! Yeah, Ty, yeah, Nathan, good to see hey. you guys, fired up to be here. That was a really good time, man. Oh my gosh. We had more fun than people skydiving in Miami. <laughs> so I guess that's a, that's a good place to start as any. Um, how did our boys do? How did they handle their skydiving experience? Yeah, very well. I didn't go with Woody, but I saw his footage and that looked cool. But um, yeah, we um, he did great. Like aerial awareness. He was like, heads up. Um, I came in for the like poke the eyeballs and do the block thing and, and got the <laughs> shock is going and, and, uh, the, the cool thing about when you go skydiving tandem is that you're basically along for the ride and the tandem instructors, they've got you, you know? And so you are, um, so you're basically safe, you know, and, and you're along for the ride, just to kind of check out the view and, and rock and roll. And the, the thing is, the trick is to not panic, to breathe and enjoy the ride. And, um, and then when you land, you got to get your feet up too, because it comes sliding in on your butt at the end. And um, those are the big tricks right there for going tandem skydiving. Mm -hmm. And and tandem skydiving is like an introduction, if you will, to um, the sky, to falling through the air, Earth's atmosphere at 120 miles an hour. Uh, for you, do you still have nerves when you go out, or are you just past nerves at this point? You know. It, it depends on what's going on. Like if, if like say we're going tandem skydiving with our boys, um, I think we're just going to have some fun and rock and roll. Cause we've done this so many times and that um, like, say we're about to do a jump in Miami again for the, um, the hard rock cafe, the, you know, the guitar building, the casino, mm -hmm. um, we're going to go do a night jump and spiral down around the, the the neck frets that project lights into the sky and we're spiraling around that and then we're going to swoop the building and then go out into the swimming pool sometimes i get a little nervous for those you know get all <laughs> fired up mostly it's for getting nervous to get the shot you know what i mean because we're there to do a job and, and to make some cool sky art if you will and um i just want to be the best artist that i could be so i get nervous that i put on a good show Miles, how did you get into throwing yourself out of the sky? You know, you know, I kind of fell into it. <laughs> ah, sorry, that was the biggest setup right there. But, um, you know, it was when I was a kid, I saw a guy land a parachute on a soccer field that I was playing on, and that just blew my mind. And I was like, I want to do that. And so um, it wasn't until I was 25 years old and I graduated college already and I met these people. I met Frank and Molly and Jim Fritch and these guys were skydivers. And I'm like, where do you guys go? How do we do this? And they're like, you got a credit card? I'm like, yep, they'll follow us. <laughs> and so I went to Yolo County Airport in Davis, California and um, signed up for skydive lesson September 6th, 1995. Miles, and I have to, I have to stop you there. Did you just say you did this first in a place called Yolo County? Exactly, dude. Yellow County Airport. You only live right. once. <laughs> that could not be <laughs> more perfect. Awesome? Yeah, yeah. And that was kind of before like YOLO was even a thing, you know? People <laughs> still figuring out what to do with that acronym, you know? And uh, that's just the name of a county in California near um, Sacramento in Davis, California. And uh, Skydance Skydiving was my first jump. And it was like uh, we did eight hours of ground school, learn how the parachutes work. And then once we jumped, it was like, oh, the world is sideways. Okay, it's flattening out. Look at this instructor. He's like, bend your knees, Ma. Okay. <laughs> then I look at the other instructor, and he's going, bah! I'm like, bah, right back at you, you know? And then I'm like, this is so awesome. I'm like, God, I'm going to do this forever. So my first jump was just hook, line, and sinker, you know? Opened my own parachute, flew it down, landed, stood it up. And I'm like, wow, I'm going to have to get a job here, like sweeping the floors or something and figure out how to 
work my way up the ladder so that I could like skydive for a living. And here we are today, skydiving for a living, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing that the guys mentioned when they went skydiving was when the parachute pulls, like you really feel it like on your legs, like this intense pulling. And they both described like just being exhausted. And like, I think they both said they took naps that day and were just like done <laughs> for the day. Is that like, an experience that's typical for like someone's first time. Yeah. It's an adrenaline every overload. time. Yeah. It's an adrenaline overload for sure. You know? And, um, the thing is when you go skydiving all day, um, yes, the openings are, we call them positive openings, you know, they're like, they upright you and rah, parachute <laughs> opens pretty quickly. And, um, I mean, you're doing 120 miles an hour and you're slowing yourself down to about 30, you know? In a, in a matter of like three or four seconds, you know, and uh, sometimes they open a little bit faster, but um, a little bit more positive of an opening. So yeah, you could get to feel it. And I guess we get leg calluses. I'm not really sure how that works, but uh, yeah, over time um, you kind of get used to the hard openings or the smir- the harder openings, base jumping is even more so, mm-hmm. excuse me, harder openings, you know, skydiving, it snivels, the canopy like, Wiggle, 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 yeah. And uh, skydiving or base jumping, it's more like wham, you know, like super hard openings. And um, it's an adrenaline overload, you know, especially for your first jump. Because on your first jump, you're stepping out of the box. You know, you get a little overwhelmed and it's like, oh, my God, what's going to happen to me? This is crazy. Okay, the parachute's open. Oh, now I can breathe. The thing was you were breathing the whole time. You just didn't know it. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a sensory overload. That's for sure. So miles, I think one of the biggest things to come out of all of that footage was a moment that happened before they even jumped where Tony was basically told to, I guess, lean into and embrace Igor, his tandem jump partner in a way where he threw his head back very sensually and went, uh, essentially, what was happening in that moment? Can you describe why he had to get all up in Igor's business and what does that actually do? Yeah, actually that pulls himself away from Igor's business. <laughs> but what that does is it arches your body. Um, basically, you want to make your make yourself into like a human shuttlecock. And if you're like this, you're cupped and you want to flip upside down. But if you arch and you're bent back this way, then you're like a teardrop in the air and the air glances off your body and you sink your hips into, Hey, I got a little thing here. Let me show you. Oh, we're like, getting a demonstration. Here we go. Oh, look at this. So, <laughs> so you get like this. <laughs> so you're like arched out like this and the wind deflects off your body and your hips drive your body down. Um, if you were to cup your body like opposite like this, it would flip you over to that. So that's why you want to go hips into the ground, like, ah, falling. But um, if you got your hips down and you're dialed in like that, that's, that's how you deflect air off your body and turn yourself mm-hmm. into that human shuttlecock that will fall straight down on your belly. Because, yeah. I mean, yeah, if you just de-arch like this and put your feet up like this, you'll flip over on your back. And that's not how you want to open a parachute because the parachutes are back here. So mm-hmm. you want to fall on your belly and then give yourself a clean deployment of your um, of your gear, of your equipment, your parachute coming off your back. All right, so just yeah, to so confirm, that was a safety routine thing and not Tony giving into his sexual desires for Igor. Yeah, you know, call it what you want, but yeah, that's pretty much what it is. <laughs> and that was expertly demonstrated by what appears to be a small crash test dummy in the position yeah. of your standard skydiver. Um, yeah, totally. This is a kind of <laughs> position right here. He's got like a pole holding him up right there. Yep. And uh, yeah, he's basically in free fall position. This thing is maneuverable though. So it can like go into all kinds of positions and, and like he can run, he can do all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. But, um, but for our purposes to show the right arch position, legs back, arms up, head up, looking at the horizon and hips forward. And that is your typical free fall position right there. That's how you want to fall through the sky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
when Miles, you uh, oh sorry go ahead Nathan go ahead Nathan uh, when you do these extreme things are you a screamer because I scream when I I've done like some light nothing ext- like cliff jumping in uh, Dubrovnik like 30 40 feet max and then you know just not like it's extreme but a roller coaster if I'm doing something that's like making me feel like dropping or stuff I'm like ah screaming because I feel like if I don't scream something else is going to come out like so when you're doing yeah. these things all right what are you doing first you say it then you do it right <laughs> I'm I'm a loud person for sure I have a very strong diaphragm especially when I get excited and I'm a wooer I'm like woo all up in your face <laughs> woo <laughs> Definitely a wooer, man. I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, Miles, when we're when we're talking about your career, we're talking about over sixteen thousand jumps combined, which is a staggering number for a regular person. Of those experiences, does one stick out as like the most extreme thing that you're looking back on? Is like, wow, I can't believe I did that. Well, yeah, there's actually a handful of them that do stick out. I mean getting to jump in Petra Jordan off of the treasury tower, you know, where Indiana Jones found the Holy grail. Um, that's where um, we got to go and, and visit the uh, Prince crown Prince uh, gave us permission um, to jump and land skydiving there and to do a base jump if it's feasible. And we found a way it was, um, it wasn't an easy jump. It was one of the, the it was the most difficult base jump I've ever done. And that I would have to say was the pinnacle of my base jumping career, jumping into Jordan. And, uh, and then number two, I would say would be, I jumped into the Gaylord um, hotel and in um, national Harbor. I just got a photo over here. I was about to go frame it up. Hold on one second. We're getting a lot of visual aids today, which is wonderful. He's coming back now with He's got some hustle to him too. The photo. Oh wow. That one inside oh, the building. It is a and I don't large. Know if you can see that, uh, I jumped off of there. This is inside of a mm-hmm. building. Oof. Flew down and then landed into this like little tiny little area. And it was really tiny. So, I mean, the degree of difficulty. So you're jumping from you're indoors, but it's kind of like this indoor outdoor courtyard. You're jumping yeah. from like the top of it and basically pulling the chute instantly. And then it looks like you're angling it to the right to where there's the opening to the outside. Yep. That, that is just a whole yeah. that's nuts. This is a whole nother level. I did 86 jumps to prepare for this one oh jump. I mapped out this building and I was hanging ropes off of the prime bridge here in Idaho to train for this. And I did 86 jumps because it's like only 170 feet to impact. So right here, if I hit the ground, that's 170 feet. Then I got to clear this balcony that you don't really see right here. But the thing is, the trick is also that I have to get underneath this um, mm-hmm. steel structure here because that comes down before it goes out that way. And then I have to, I, so I have to turn and sink it and then dive underneath there. And then I land at 220 feet below my exit and I land in a tight little courtyard and there's a water yeah. fountain and I have to kick the water fountain and try to land on this bullseye. Wow. And there's just news cameras all lined up down there. And it was, that one was hairball, yeah, dude. but the Petra Jordan really trumps that because of the tightness of the canyon and oh my gosh. But yeah, those, I would say those are my top two base jumps right there. And, uh, but um, yeah, I've got a handful of ones that are like just super memorable. And my first jump, of course, Scott Aving, where it was like a whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, just seeing that, I'm like, what are your, what are your nerves? Like, do you just go through the day? Like nothing phases you. Like if I'm in traffic and I'm going to like shoot the gap, I'm like, Oh, I I hope it goes. Okay. Like, are you just going through your day? Like nothing phases you now? Oh man. I'm always just get fired up. And like, I'm like that going through traffic. That's a whole nother thing, you know, cause usually (laughs) I'm like in a hurry, hang on, look out guys, we're going skydiving. We got to get to the drop zone. You know, don't you guys know we're going skydiving? (laughs) Does everybody drive like that? Oh yeah. And, uh, (laughs) but, um, I'm always like, I like to be on time. And if I'm late for something, I freak out. So I'm always like, we're going to go, we got to go, we got to go. And then, um, but try to give yourself ample time to get there. But you know how it is when you're like 
rallying and making use of your time. You want to set yourself off to where um, you need to make up a few minutes on the way, that kind of thing, you know? And yeah, uh, so Siri, you got to like outdo Siri on the way there. So yeah. Miles, you have, you have done base jumping. You've done skydiving. The next logical step is to follow Felix Baumgartner and start doing some space diving. Is that in oh the cards God. for you? Dude, you're barking up my tree right there. I would love to, you know, I, I've always wanted to become an astronaut ever since I was a kid, you know, and like um, my mom, I was born in 69 and, and um, she showed me the moon landing, that kind of thing on TV. Of course, I don't remember it, but going back and looking at it, um, it's just like, yeah, I've always wanted to be an astronaut. And it's, it's funny. One of my friends, John Schaffner, he's actually going to be, he is an astronaut. He's going to become an astronaut. He's, he's training right now to go up to the international space station. He's going to be one of the first civilians, one of the first handfuls of civilians, maybe number two, I think to actually pilot the aircraft to the international space station. And uh, I would love to start from the international space station or the moon and then rocket towards earth but it just in a <laughs> spacesuit you know what i mean and like iron man had like the you know and uh or yeah. maybe wally with a fire extinguisher but um yeah and start heading towards the planet and then all of a sudden you start getting pulled in like a tractor beam and then it starts to go faster and faster and then you're like oh, slow down. And you're coming at the planet all fast yeah mm -hmm. i would love to do that but right now realistically I'm going to fly my paramotor out of the backyard. I'm going to go jump out of airplanes. And tomorrow, my friend um, Richard and I, we're going to jam down to Notch Peak and go hike three hours up to the top of this mountain. And then we're going to jump off of our wingsuits and fly down around some rocks on our way down, base jump down to our truck and camp out, oh, spend man. the night, do it again in the morning. So, hi I mean, hiking for you is a whole nother experience because, you know, I hike, I have the same uphill experience and, you know, still for me, the downhill part is fun, but I think you're having a lot more fun than I am on the uh, downhill portion of your hiking. Yeah. Downhill's tough on the knees, bro. You just oh, absolutely kills my <laughs> knees. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I like to um, hike uphill. I'm all about it. You know, I set a record in twin falls for most human powered um, parachute jumps in a day. And uh, Danny Whalen went ahead and did it after I did and tied it with me. We did 64 jumps and hiked over 30,000 vertical feet in a day. And uh, tomorrow uh, morning or tomorrow evening, we're only going to hike, uh, what is it, 4,000 feet. And um, it's going to be in one big push. And we're going to get to the top, pull out our backpacks with our wingsuits. I got everything just piled up over here on the ground, ready to go. And then uh, and we're going to do a little truck camping. So we'll, We'll park the truck, we'll hike up, we'll jump down and land, and then it'll start to get dark right around landing. So we'll pack up our parachute for breakfast for the morning, and then we'll set up um, like a little camp. And um, we're going to bring some pasta, bring some pizza, hang out, carbo load a little bit, and keep hydrated because we're out in the desert, and just do a little truck camping. And in the morning, get up, hike up there again, jump off, land, and then drive home and go check out some kind of food at a diner or something on the way home. Mm -hmm. Miles, I have a hypothetical it. for you. Yeah. So, you know, in, uh, in like the Looney Tunes, they would occasionally bust out a parachute, but instead of a parachute coming out, it would be like an anvil or something like that. Yeah. Say you yeah. and I are in a plane together and we're not yeah. tandem diving and I go first and, and I have one of those situations. I open up my parachute and just like nothing comes out. So then you dive after me. Would it be difficult for you to chase me down, reattach yourself to me and successfully complete the dive? Do you have those types of skills? Yeah, yeah. it'd be very difficult. <laughs> if we planned on doing it like Travis Pastrana did once uh, with Scott Palmer um, and Scott was his catcher and Travis didn't have anything on except for a waist harness and they jumped out and they like, like, uh, Travis did a bunch of flips and then Scott came in and then jumped, like jumped on his back and then hooked in and then opened up a parachute and caught Travis and then took him down and landed on a beach. Um, super difficult. And they had already planned it. So if it wasn't planned, it would, it would be near impossible, you know, but, um, that we do like 
if you're doing a AFF course, like accelerated free fall, where you're learning how to skydive, you have two instructors on either side of you. And if you don't pull your parachute, their job is to grab you and pull your parachute for you. So there is, there are situations when you're learning in your first 11 skydives where that's what the plan is. You know, it's the plan is for you to pull, but you got backup on either side. So, yeah. So you mentioned a record that you had of, I think it was like the most human powered, like parachute poles in a day. What are, what are some other records that uh, you hold that you're proud of? Well, I just lost my, my most jumps record. Um, mm-hmm. And that was my most proud one, but um, yeah. Wait, who <laughs> beat you? Guys out there crushing it. What's that? Who beat you? Who took the record? Oh, Sean Chuma. Yeah, he, he also lives here in Twin Falls, Idaho, and you're a product of your environment. So he moved out here as well and just jumping and sending and sending and, and going for it. And like, you know, I always see him at the bridge and we always just like, hey, dude, what's up? Hey, dude, what's up? We even got our special handshake, <laughs> you know, and uh, Eric, Eric, Eric. But um, yeah, he he's got over 7000 base jumps now. So it's like, holy cow, you know, and it's funny because when I first started um, skydiving and base jumping, my friend Shane McConkey and I, we were asking our skydive buddies, how many jumps do you got? And they're like, oh, 5,000. 5,000 skydives. Oh, my God. I can't believe you survived long enough to make 5,000 skydives. And then we thought, wouldn't it be amazing to be able to survive 5,000 base jumps? Because base jumping is way more dangerous than skydiving. And that was, that's always been a goal of mine to get to 5,000 base jumps. And I was the first guy to make it to that, you know, (laughs) and there's only a handful of people who got over 5,000 base jumps, you know? And I think that just is a testament to like doing it because you love it over and over and over and making that your lifestyle. You know, there's Maurizio De Palma who lives in Italy and he's, he's just crushing it every day, all day and doing tandem base jumps as well off big cliffs and Chuma's doing tandem base jumps here. I'm getting into my tandem gear as well for base jumping to share the sport with people. And uh, not tandem skydives. I'm talking about tandem base jumping, you know, where you like one parachute system, go back, oh. open up and woo, go flying together and and uh, cruise down into a nice canyon and feet up, come sliding in on your butt. Or if there's good wind, just stand it right up. But, um, yeah, there's, there's only a few um, – Less than, I'd say, less than 10 people on the planet over 5,000 base jumps. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty um, tight group right there. So that's kind of one of my favorite things right there. And uh, I've also flown a wingsuit through a target and smashed the bullseye with my face. I'd say that was a really good one. And there's a handful of people who have done that. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, just dude. to show how um, – how accurate you could be with your body flying a wingsuit through a target with your face. That's so fun. Oh my gosh. So we've kind of touched on like the experience of skydiving and base jumping. Talk to us about flying a wingsuit. Oh my gosh. Wingsuiting. That's the most fun you can have with your clothes on. That's where you um, put on a wingsuit, which basically you tie your arms to your legs and your legs together. And then you jump out of a plane or off a cliff and the, the wind um, goes in your inlets and it pressurizes your suit and it makes your wings puff up and you basically keep your head tilted and you start attacking and, and diving. And then you push down on your leg wing and then boom, you get massive lift and, um, a parachute will fly at a three to one glide ratio. So that means every foot that you fall, you do three feet forward. So you're flying at about a 28 degree angle like this. And a wingsuit also flies at a three to one glide ratio. So once you start going, you you fall, you fall, you get speed and you take off and you're doing a three to one glide ratio and you're doing, it's a 130 miles an hour forward on this three to one glide ratios. You're just doing the Macarena. And we just got, remember F1 came to Miami? What? Mm -hmm. We got to jump into the track. Jeff Provenzano and Sean McCormick, my Red Bull Air Force teammates and I, they jumped out with their super fast parachutes where they come swooping in and do like 70, 80 miles an hour across the ground. And they jumped out and faced up the line of flight. And I waited for them to open up. And then I jumped out with my wingsuit and went 
shoot right past them with my wingsuit. It was super fun. So I was basically racing down the, above the track, right down the main lane, and then ripping past my um, Red Bull Air Force teammates while they're under their fast parachutes. And if I go in front of them, I could ball up their wing because my airspeed will disrupt the air, like wake turbulence, like an airplane takes off and it waits for a little while. So the next one takes off and the air's not all turbulent. I could basically collapse their parachutes by flying in front of them. So I kind of gave them a little bit of, a little bit of love flying off to the side of them, you know, and didn't collapse them. That was nice of me on a high profile demo in front of <laughs> thousands of people. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, wingsuiting is just like, you look here, you go here, you look there, you go there. You, you pull your arms back and you bend your knees and you just dive out of the sky. Just boom. And then you scoop your body and you press your legs and just, oh, you can actually get a bunch of speed going downhill and then flatten it out, flatten it out, and then flatten it out so much. And then you actually can get lift after a big dive and, and a gaining speed. You can get lift and do about 200 feet upwards before you run out of speed and have to dive and get speed again. So you can fly a wingsuit up. And that's pretty much at the end of our skydive. What we do is we're, we're diving down and then we power up and then we flare up and then we open our parachutes and then it's a lot softer opening. It's not one of those hard, positive openings. It's more chill. One follow-up mm-hmm. question on the wingsuit. How do you land a wingsuit? Because I'm envisioning you're just going, you're going, you're going, and then splat. Yeah, that's exactly what would happen. Um, you could plane it out, but you're doing, like I said, you're doing about 120 miles an hour forward when you're planing it out. Probably 130 at that point. And uh, you're going to break your neck if you like skip across the ground and that kind of thing. And only one person, Gary Connery, has landed a wingsuit that actually meant to land a wingsuit. Two other people landed in trees accidentally and survived it, broke themselves like beyond oblivion, walked it off later after surgery. But um, actually one guy crashed and um, walked away from it. But um, Gary Connery, he stacked up a bunch of boxes. He's a stuntman that jumps out of buildings and lands in boxes, cardboard boxes. And he had friends and family stack these boxes up and he jumps out of a helicopter and he flared up really slow and he just went piling into the boxes and then he got up and walked away out of there and he didn't deploy his parachute. But the, the answer to your question is you got to open a parachute, land a parachute. That's key. That just mm-hmm. seems so difficult when you're talking about like your, your arms and legs being like basically strapped together. How do you even, how do you even do that? Yeah. You just, um, you practice, of course, <laughs> how to get to Carnegie Hall. No, you, um, you, you, here, let me show you. I got one right here. Like, I'm so curious about the logistics of uh-huh. this. I've always wondered, like, how do they actually land those? So you got a, a Red right? Bull wingsuit here. So you get inside and you zip it up. And basically, like, you bend your knees back to let the wing kind of go back. But when it's time to flare up, you just push your body. And you scoop your body like that. And and here, let me get my little handy dandy stick figure guy our, out. Our mini crash dummy here. Yeah, he's gonna like in he's the gonna be forward. flying a wingsuit like this with a straight body and arms back, like in a delta position, like that. He's gonna be like head down, chin down a little bit like that, and just like I'm flying, I'm flying, and the legs are gonna be like that because it's wide wingsuit. And then when it's time to flare up. You push down a little bit with your arms, you de-arch like that, and you push your, drive your toes. You got to push on your toes and you basically push down and make a big scoop out of your body like that. You can see that right there where he's like, it's like that. It's like the, it looks like the reverse of skydiving kind of. Yeah. And where you go, skydiving, oh, you're angling oh. your legs back and exactly. your arms back here. You're pushing the other way to get that that lift up yep that's it and you're basically pushing on your leg wing that's the biggest wing of your body and you push on that leg wing and it scoops air and it and it kind of you kind of keep your chest like that when you're pushing your arms but you're pushing driving on your leg wing and that's going to give you a resistance and push you up and then you go to pull your parachute bend your knees throw your hips forward pull your arms in like this throw your parachute out and then 
reach up and get your arms in and collapse your arm wing, kind of like kind of like this right here. Mm-hmm. Except his arms doesn't want his arms doesn't want to stay there. And then the parachute comes off, and then it opens, and your your legs will swing up, and you want to reach up and grab your risers, but your arms are still zip down to in your seat, legs. Yeah. So you got to unzip your arms wow. first, and then um, unzip your legs after that. I can demonstrate for you too. Let me change this so angle. How, how do you how do you practice that without like? Is it like a wind tunnel, or is there is skydiving. there a way to practice that without? So skydiving, okay. Yeah, yeah, you go skydive and, and figure it out that way. And you're doing it, so then you wind practice wind. at a much higher elevation with the yeah. with the parachute pull. Yeah, you're gonna do everything at like uh, open up your parachute at like five thousand feet. Yeah. Um, and then tomorrow when we go base jumping, we're gonna jump from like five thousand feet. <laughs> And we're going to open at like 400 <laughs> feet. And uh, that's the, the level of difficulty going from skydiving to base jumping. There is a place in uh, Stockholm, Sweden, where you can go and uh, see, just put it on like a dress. That's what we call it. It's like put it on my sky dress right here. And uh, Stockholm, Sweden has a wind tunnel. And you can um, you could fly in a wind tunnel that's designed for – uh, wingsuits. It's a horizontal wind tunnel. And uh, it's pretty dangerous, man. I know some people have gone in there and wrecked themselves. But uh, yeah. Let me see if I can get my shoe in this thing. So he is, he's go. putting on the, the wingsuit right now. He's zipping himself up. And you zip yourself in here like a straight jacket, right? Mm-hmm. It looks like you're putting on a Halloween costume. Yeah. You look like you look like you're about to escort your kids going door to door as a Red Bull skydiver. Yep, it's a good idea. Hey kids, come on! You're in front of this thing. You look like a penguin because you can't really yeah. like, move your feet past that. So you're like, <laughs> but yeah, mm-hmm. this is basically it right here. Wow, that's. Like, okay, now I'm, I'm going really fast, I'm straight, and it's time to, like, flare up. I'll, like, scoop and hollow my body out a little bit, like that, and then push with my toes on the wind, and, like, whoop. And then when I open, look at this, I can't lift my arms up past that. So I can't grab my, my toggles unless I bend my knees up or unzip and then go grab everything and start flying your parachute. Same thing for your feet. You got to reach down here, grab this, and get a foot out so now I can run my landing. Oh, you're reaching and grabbing the. I'm getting stressed just thinking about trying to reach and grab those zippers at like 400 feet. Well, oh, yeah. what this is. Well, you do it fast. Like what this is reinforcing for me is that like you're putting your life in the hands of a zipper that you are praying does not get stuck. Like if Here's a little bit thing. of fabric gets stuck in there, you are done. Oh. That zipper, I am going to, like, figure a way out to get up there. And I might have to rip something <laughs> from my arm. I've, I've actually gone up through the zippers and, like, just, like, stretched this suit out and gotten my toggles before. And actually, the, um, the wingsuit that I'm going to fly, it has um, softer covers right here over the arms so that I can elastic. I can push through the elastic mm-hmm. and get to my toggles. But I need to bend my knees up like this so that my arms can make it up there. And I can clear my toggles and straighten out my heading. And then I go poop, 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 unzip everything, and I'm back to the toggles and then in for landing. So fun yeah. though, dude. These suits. Squirrel, man. If you want to see more about them, go to squirrel.ws for wingsuit. And there's so many cool videos. I'm just saying. I recommend going there and checking it out anyway and, and, and click on the video meet squirrel because it's, it's freaking hilarious. Oh my God. You'll, you'll get an ab workout watching these guys, you know, kind of introduce their company that makes the, the uh, wing suits and the parachutes that we use for base jumping. So yeah, highly recommend check out www.squirrel.ws. That was a little throw out right there. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Miles, you said you were born in 1969, which by my calculations means you're 53 years old. Something like that. Mentally, <laughs> your mental age. 
How old do you feel? Because you oh seem gosh. more full of life and vigor than anyone I know. That depends on who you ask. My wife thinks I'm a teenager, but um, <laughs> I feel like at least, least mid 20s ish, maybe like late 20s, eh, probably mid 20s. Yeah. I mean, I started skydiving in, in when I was 25 years old and just kind of like Peter Pan, right? You know, it's kind of got locked into that 25 year old lifestyle. So here we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I recently had to uh, face some of my own mortality in finding a gray hair in this scraggly mess that I call a beard. Um, and I mean, for you, it's something you're <laughs> facing every day with the crazy stunts that you're doing, like doing the thing that you love. And I just wonder, like, how do you balance that doing something where like, you know, it's clear that you have such a passion for it, but it's also something that's like, you know, it's, I mean, for you, it's not dangerous because you practice so much, but there's still that element of danger. If, if something oh, unknown dangerous. happens, it's dangerous. I don't have gray hairs because <laughs> look at that. <laughs> it's all, it's, that's going to be baby. me soon. That's yeah. a heavy play. Yeah. Yeah. So how, but, how do you um, balance that? Year, yeah, last year I was flying a paraglider, a speed wing, and I collapsed it. I was flying in bad conditions. I should have been flying. And I was like, I got this, but I didn't got this. And I, I folded up my wing and I fell out of the sky like a bag of hammers, smashed in, and I broke my knee. And I got surgery, got a plate, 13 screws. And that set me back quite a bit, um, not just physically, but mentally, you know what I mean? And, uh, I'm still getting on the horse. I mean, I can run and jump and do the things I need to do, but I'm only doing them at like half my capacity because I think my leg is still only about 80% of what it used to be. I can't just pick up my paramotor from a mm -hmm. squat. I have like lean forward, get on my hands and push up like most people do. But like what I'm going to do is get my butt to the gym some more <laughs> and keep pressing, getting my squat on so that I can finally like, get that paramotor up off the ground without like having to lean forward and use my hands. My goal after I hurt myself was to get strong enough to where the next time I crashed, leave a dent in the earth and then walk away from it <laughs> and check this out, dude. Oh, these pants, they don't go up. Maybe. Oh no, they don't. Oh man. But I basically banged my knee and I got a nice scab right there. It's a pretty good looking one where I left that dent in the earth we're talking about, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, yeah. And I walked away from it like this. It hurt. And nice I was like, strut. I was like wincing on the inside. All, oh, whoa, but I was like, yeah, I got yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Nathan, I can, I can feel miles roaming off on you. You have said dude more times in this one episode than you have said in the entire time that we've known each other. <laughs> Nice. nice you know he's pulling out my uh californian dude that's right that's, <laughs> that's right yeah i i know of yolo county i mean that's it's yeah. several miles north of me but when when i heard yolo county i'm like nah, i'm familiar nice. I, got, I, I still got to make my way up there though sweet sweet yeah yeah where were you in california i spent a lot uh, of time i i am in uh like uh la county area okay Lancaster, nice. like Mojave okay. Desert. Sweet. Nice, dude. Yeah. Where That's can he jump off of a building there? What's that? I, I, I was asking, where can Nathan jump off of a building there? I don't, I don't think that's an option. In Lancaster. I think you're going to be looking for enough. antennas. Look for an antenna. You know? <laughs> a windmill. Yeah. Hey, windmills are that's good to go. Spinning. Tall enough, yeah. Or jump off the backside of the windmill so you don't hit the spinny thing. It won't kill you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, Mojave desert, dude, you should get an e-bike or a paramotor, you know, and then rock and roll the skies that way. That sounds like a cool place. Yeah. Awesome, man. Right on. Yeah. That's I've been down there. Um, Joshua tree is kind of nearby. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I uh, spent some time climbing down there and like skinning my knuckles all up on the rocks. And, uh, but yeah, beautiful place. Love it. But yeah, I moved to Idaho so that I live right next to the prime bridge and see all these parachutes right here? These are all base rigs. And I over, teach base jump. Looks yeah. like over a dozen different parachutes there for sure. 17. Got 17 of them right there, you know. Yeah. And there's a few more of them over there. But, uh, yeah, I got 17 base rigs. They're mostly for my students because I teach a school called Miles D's Base Camp. 
And, um, and right now I got an off week and we're supposed to go to the Cayman Islands and go skydiving Red Bull Air Force style. Only there's a hurricane in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And right now is a lightning storm in the Cayman Islands. It's lasting a week. So we canceled that air. They canceled the air show. So we're not, we're not going to that one. It's kind of a bummer because I was all fired up to take my wife to the Cayman Islands to go feed some stingrays with our hands. And like, here you go. I was told to keep your thumbs in because they're little suckers. They get your thumb in there and it hurts. And you got to pull it out of their mouths. But uh, yeah, maybe another time we'll get that opportunity to go do that. That was, that was going to be one of our trip of lifetimes right there. But no, we'll have to plan another one. Yep. Well, Miles, it is very clear that this podcast is not going to have a more extreme guest in our entire <laughs> history. Like that's, I feel like we can we can just stamp that one. We're not going to get a more extreme <laughs> guest. So before we let you go, I want you to leave our listeners with some words of wisdom. How can we all live just a little bit more extreme? We're not going to live as extreme as you, but I think we could all probably stand to live maybe like 1% more extreme. How can we do that? Um, what I was going to say, can you guys still see me? Uh, no, get, we lost you. I'm, I'm getting a phone call. I got to like say, um, send voicemail. There we go. There we That's go. my buddy, Richard. Here we go. Yeah. I was getting a phone call from my partner who wants to go, um, wingsuit, uh, base jumping tomorrow. I would say go to miles and check out the videos. But no, honestly, I would just say, find out what it is you love to do and then do it. And stop stopping and go do it. Make make some time and and like maybe you love bowling, maybe you love riding bikes, maybe you like to go fishing, maybe you like to like what I did is I found out what sport it is I love to do and I started doing it and it just consumed me and I that's like all I would think about. I lived in a tent for two years so that I could save every nickel so that I could just put it all into my sport and then it turned around on me into a into a job. And now I'm like luckier than I've ever, all of my dreams have been coming true by doing exactly what I wish to do, but also um, working hard at it, making plans, figuring out what my big goal is, and then breaking it down into parts and then stair step leveling into where I want to be at the end of the day. And, uh, and by the end of the day, I mean, in the end of like, maybe a year, maybe in the end of two years, you know, and if you have these cool ideas that you want to do, write them down, figure out how you can get there by breaking it down into parts and then work away, chisel away at each part and get to it. But um, yeah, enjoy your life. I mean, this is your life, dude. This is what you do. This is yeah, your dude. life. This is all you get. Might as well enjoy it as much maximum human enjoyment is what we're after. So um and I just found it by being an athlete, um, like I can throw my body and do all these things instead of landing in a pool um, off a diving board, I could jump off a cliff and land in a parachute and fly down and like <laughs> whoop, whoop, high five my friends in the LZ and laugh all day. Man, that's something else, man. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. It's been a blast. My pleasure. It was really fun skydiving with our boys and uh, hopefully we see you guys out of the drop zone sometime too if you're ever hankering for a skydive because it'll change your life the way you look at the earth and the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. We'll yeah. see about that. Maybe <laughs> I would, I would, I would, yeah. I don't know if I could get a, my wife definitely would not. And I might have to convince her to mm -hmm. let me go, but I, I would definitely want to do that at some point. Yeah. Highly recommend it, man. Yeah. There's a drop zone near you. Awesome, man. Well, thanks Ty. Thanks Nathan. I'm stoked to be on the podcast yeah. rocking out with you fellas. Yeah, hopefully we see you in the sky or maybe just um, hanging out at a bar or on a beach somewhere one of these days too. That's more my speed. There we go. Living yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miles. Thanks, man. Awesome, fellas. Happy days to you. Yep. Stay safe, buddy. Yeah, we will do. And you as well. Thanks, man. All right. See ya. <laughs> see ya.